this is Jen Harvey of The Huddle. I want to thank each and every person for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This evening, I sent out the post, and it was a really provocative one. And it says, um, hold just a moment, let me get to it. It says, if not now, when? And if not me, who? And that's a question that each and every one of us need to ask ourselves. And I know many have thought about it. So let us open with a word of prayer and then we will begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you. Lord, we praise you and we worship you. We magnify your name. We thank you, Lord God, for you're a good God. You're a gracious God. You're a kind King. There is none like you. You are high and lifted up. So this evening we're asking you, Holy Spirit, may you speak to our hearts because we know you're present. For the Bible says we're two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of us. I pray that you will move mightily in our midst this evening and do what eyes haven't seen, do what ears haven't heard, do what has never even entered in our own hearts. And we will be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So if not now, when? And if not me, who? The reason why I ask that question is that many of us have been waiting on God to do many things in our lives. We have been waiting, 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 and yet there is no answer. And I'm wondering, why is there no answer? Because there's a teaching from many of our pulpits that we cannot do anything without God and that only God can do it. Now, I understand when they say we cannot do anything with God, without God, if we put it in its proper context, seeing that God is the giver of life, seeing that it is God who holds our breath. I can understand it in that context. But when you make a general statement that you can't do anything without God, it implies that everyone in this planet cannot do anything without God. And so who makes the wicked do their wicked things? Is it God that causes the wicked to do wickedly if we can't do anything without God? Do you see what I'm trying to get at? We can't do anything without God in that he gives us breath. He holds our life. The number of our days are in his hand. But we must remember that he ordered this universe and he made us free moral agents and he gave us power. He gave us a brain. He gave us will. And there are many things that he has already spoken in the book of Genesis. He says, go forth. He says, you must have dominion. God has already spoken. My friends, God has already spoken. He said, go forth and have dominion. He says, occupy and do business until I return. And so there are many things that God will never do for us because he has already spoken and he has given us the power to do it. So I want to ask you the question, if not now, when? And I added, if not me, who? Now, this famous statement was coined by a gentleman called Ilal. And it was, I researched and it was found in episode five of the Christian television TV drama called The Chosen. And Ilan was thought to be born in Babylon. According to the Talmud, that is the, the Jewish uh, Torah, their system, the, what, we, what is equivalent to our Bibles, uh, he descended from the tribe of Benjamin. And is on his father's side, but on his mother's side, he came from the family of David. Historians profess he was a Jewish sage. He was wise and he was one of their religious leaders. So James 2 verses 17 says, even so, even so faith, if it hath no works is dead, being alone. So you're believing God for something, but the Bible says it is not enough, Michelle, to believe him. There must be work and joined with your faith because faith without works is dead. That's what James 2 verses 26 says. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. And so 
what are you looking to God to change in your life? What do you want God to turn around, Sharon? What is it that you have been waiting for? People have waited for five years, 10 years, 15 years. And if it is not done, then when is it going to be done? And is it that God is saying, I am not going to do this thing because we need to partner? Or is it that God is saying, I'm not going to do this thing, Sharon, because I've equipped you and I've empowered you and I have given you my word so you can go forth and get it accomplished. When I look at the heathens and when I look at satanist, they have degrees, they live in beautiful homes, they are married, they have children, their children are accomplished and yet they scorn the name of God and they accomplish all these things. They are not indwelled by the Holy Spirit. So you are telling me by purpose of God's grace and their grit, they accomplish. Now, what about God's grace, your grit, and you have the greatest power, the Holy Spirit. Why are we not accomplishing, Michelle? Can anybody really tell me why a person who disdain God, who speaks against God, who doesn't believe God, they have healthy bodies, not healthy minds now, they have healthy bodies, they don't have healthy emotions, but they have degrees, they are not indebted, they live in good neighborhoods. Why? They spurn God. So you see that it's not the, you can't do anything without God. They spurn God. It is God's goodness because what does the Bible say, Sharon? That God causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. So um, why are we not seeing the sunshine of God in our lives? If the Satanists can show forth the, 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 the goodness of God earth in their lives, why is it that we who are indwelled by the spirit of the living God. Why is it that we are not getting the results we need to get? Why are we still stuck? Why are we still in the place that we are? What are we waiting on? If not now, Chris, when? And if not you, Chris, who will do it? If you're going to change your situation, then you must look at yourself in a mirror. And you've got to ask yourself, look at yourself through what I've always said, and I cannot stop saying it, the five T's. Eartha, you can't change your situation until you look at what you do with your time. Chris, you can't change your situation until you have identified your talents and you look at what you're doing with your talents. Shake, you will not change your situation until you look at your talents. You must know your talents. You must look at your temple and you must take care of your temple. And then your situation will start. What about our treasure? Our treasure is not only when you were born, God did not give you a dollar. You did not come out of your mother's womb with a dollar bill in your hand. But yet he says, you have treasure. For the Bible says, God has given thee the ability to gain wealth. So what are you doing with your treasure? And what are you doing with the truth of the word of God? If you and I do not start looking at these five T's, look at them objectively and look at them Honestly, we will not change our situation. You cannot get to the next place, Val. You cannot get to the next place doing what you have always done. You cannot get to the next place knowing what you have always known. You must grow. And in order for you to grow, in order for you to increase, you must maximize the gifts and the abilities that God has given you. You must use them and you must use them to the greatest potential. Now, here's a problem we have. I face it, you face it. Um, Caroline, you also have it. Keisha, you do it at times. We focus on our weaknesses, and that is 
a no-no. It is a ploy of the enemy and our frail minds. You cannot focus on your weaknesses because your weaknesses will never get you to the next place in terms of maximizing your potential. You must Listen carefully now, here's the teaching. You must manage your weaknesses until you can master them. You must manage your weaknesses until you can master them, but you must maximize your strength. You must revere your temple. You must take care of your temple because it is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Not only is it the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, but I want someone to tell me how much can you accomplish when you're ill, when you're broken, broken in your mind, broken in your bodies, you're not feeling well. How much can we truly, truly accomplish? So we have to take care of our temples, be cognizant of or talents or gifts. Everybody talks about Solomon's wealth. And as I search through the scriptures, God says, because you have not asked for the head of your enemies, not only will I give you wisdom, but I will give you wealth. The reason why God says, I will give you wealth is because it is through Solomon's wisdom that he garnered the wealth. God gave him no money. If you read the Bible, you will hear how people came because he was so wise and they brought gifts upon gifts upon gifts upon gifts. And so he utilized his talent called wisdom, which brought him wealth. So you have to get up, my sisters and brothers. I do this. You have to get up and start writing down. There is a direct connection the way God makes the brain it's not enough that you repeat a thing, you must write the thing. It becomes active and it becomes alive when it leaves your mind and gets onto a piece of paper. That is why the Bible says you must write the vision, write it, make it clear. Every week you get up, you must know on a Sunday or a Monday, what am I going to accomplish this week? What is it that I want to accomplish this week? What must I do on which day? Do you know that's one of the secret of success? You have to successful people get up every morning and they have an itinerary. They write down what they hope to accomplish. Having written down the priority, they prioritize. Either it is the most important thing that they put first or the thing that they least like. Do you know that the thing that you don't want to do, that's the thing that you probably will overlook for the day. And so it should be, if it is important, it should be the thing that is done first. Get up. I am a morning person. I am up three o'clock in the morning. I pray best. I'm up four o'clock. Just let this week, last week, for two years, I didn't work out. And I said, enough is enough, Jen. And I got up last week and I started working out. I'm a morning person. I was in the gym at 4.15. I worked out, got connected with my prayer partner at 5.15. We prayed. So you have to have a plan. I tell, I tell my son, if you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. Take it out of your head, Michelle. Do not just say, I'm going to do this tomorrow. Write it down on a piece of paper. Write it down, prioritize. If I'm not telling you to wake up four o'clock and pray, you must deal with yourself according to knowledge. I'm not an evening person. I'm not a night person. By eight o'clock, I'm ready to go to bed. I'm a morning person. I'm a songbird. And that's when I pray best. You will never get me going to the gym in the evening after work because I'm ready to come home. I am tired and I am busted and probably very disgusted. So I'm a morning person. I know that I get up, I work out in the morning, then I do my prayers, and then I get myself off to work. So Pamela, you have to come up with a plan, and you have to work with who you are, who you know yourself to be. So I hear people say, oh, the first thing you have to do in the morning is pray. What if you're a night person and you just got finished praying at 1 a.m.? Don't become religious and don't become rigid. 
Because sometimes when we take on that which does not reflect who we are, we fail at it. You can't get me up unless it's an exercise or it's for a short period and tell me to um, pray 10 o'clock at night. I'd be fast asleep. But if you say, Jen, do you want to pray four in the morning? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. So you've got to write down what you want to accomplish for the week. You write what you want to do on Monday. Write what you want to do on Tuesday. Write what you want to do on Wednesday. Revisit it. Look at it Monday evening when the day is over and see if there's a check mark. Did I accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish? If not, you must ask yourself why. Did I become distracted? Did I become discouraged? What caused me not to have accomplished what I needed to have accomplished? When you ask yourself these questions, what you're doing is that you're setting in your mind's eye, Sharon, that you will not repeat on Tuesday what you did on Monday. So you have to write it down maximize your strengths, work on your strengths, master your strengths, and you manage your weakness until you can master it. You must walk in the truth of the light of God's word. You cannot do things and continue to do things your way and expect to gain God's result. You must ask the Holy Spirit, I need your help. Do you not know that grace only works in an obedient heart? Grace works in a willing heart. This is why when you hear it can only be done by God and people are wondering if it can only be done by God, why isn't it, why hasn't it happened? Why hasn't it occurred? It is because, and you hear, I'm waiting on God. No, you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you, Pamela. God is waiting on you, Sharon. God is waiting on you, Michelle. God is waiting on you, Jen. God is saying, I am waiting for my people to get up because your situation and your circumstances, and the same applies to me, it will not change until we get to the point where we say, I have had enough. Enough is enough. I am sick and tired of swallowing these pills day after day, high blood pressure pill, diabetic pills, high cholesterol pills, and it's not going away. I'm just masking symptoms, but I'm not getting to the root cause. My finances are not changing, but yet I still continue to do with my finances what I've always done. It's never going to change. I need to be married. Am I preparing myself? Am I positioning myself for a Boaz? How do I know what a, who a Boaz is? What must I do? I must look into the word of God. What must I look like? I must look like the woman in Proverbs 30 verses 10 through the end. I must look like a Ruth. I must see God with all my heart. I must want the giver more than the gift and you write a plan down, you rehearse it. Sharon, you open your mouth. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whatever you want, you start speaking it. It's not we're speaking, but we're not working. We're speaking, but we're not willing. We have to will to get these things done and we must work. It's not enough that we speak. And I'm encouraging you to speak because faith comes by hearing. When you speak it, out, it gets into your ears and it gets down into your spirit, man, and you start believing it. That's how we believe lies. You hear a lie repeated enough, you start believing it and you start accepting it as a truth. The same applies for truth. If you start hearing truth repetitively, if you start hearing truth repeated enough, you start believing it. But the first step is believing it. You've got to work it, my sisters. You've got to work it, my brothers. So you get up. What is it? I want my weight to be controlled. I desire health. I want to be healthy healthy in my mind. You will never become healthy in your mind. Listening to the television, listening to worldly songs, calling your friend Mrs. Bucketmouth or Mr. Snubgrass, 
and they tell you all manner of evil. In order for you to have a healthy mind, you've got to do things that are healthy. You must stay to the word of God. You must start speaking to yourself. I've told you, ladies and gentlemen, this. Uh, I stood once a prodigious 275 pounds. I would buy size 12. I would buy size 14. At the time, I was a size 24. I wouldn't stop. I saw myself healthy. I would hang these clothes where I could see them. I would speak to myself. One of the reasons, Michelle, Michelle, why we're not accomplishing Pamela is that we have stopped dreaming. Folks, you got to start dreaming. If I tell you some of the dreams I have, you'd start laughing. They're so magnanimous. They're so large. They're so outlandish that I know it's going to take a big God. Oh, it's going to take a big God to help me. Because if you dream and your dreams are so small that you alone can accomplish it, you will not become motivated. You need to dream so large and so big and don't share it with those who cannot encourage you and said yes you are able you're well able dream i was telling a friend of mine just a few days ago, and she was saying she wants to be married. I said, see yourself being married. Write your married vows. Start looking at dresses. Find a dress that you like. Take the pictures. Hang it on the refrigerator. Folks, that's how you start bringing things from out of your head, and you start bringing it out of the spirit realm into the natural realm. You've got to start seeing it. Uh, the world says you have to see to believe it. God says you have to believe it in order to see it. So you start bringing things into your space and your face that will help you to start believing and seeing it. Folks, we got to get up. This thing that it doesn't sit well with me, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Stop, stop, stop. You've been waiting five years. So God is not busy. You've been waiting six years. God is not busy. Sometimes we have to go out and we have to, the Bible says, commit your ways unto the Lord. Commit it. Go to God, Sharon, and say, God, I have this plan. Here's a house that I want to purchase. I am going to go after it. I'm building my credit. I'm saving in the deposit. God, this is my plan for this house, but you're sovereign and I give you the power to change it or present something to him. Just don't sit there. Just don't sit there. Present something to him. Father God, this is my degree. I am tired of this job. I don't feel like I'm growing. I need a job change. But you know what? We want God to say, arise, Eartha, I have found you a new job. You're going to start on Monday, April the 5th. It's not going to work. It is not going to work. It is, that's not how he works. Get up and take the risk. Faith is about taking some risk. When you uh, accepted Jesus Christ, you had to take a risk. Did you know that you took a risk? You didn't know anything about Jesus. You casted your faith because what you heard. You knew nothing about Jesus. And that's why people have other false religion because they took a risk. They cast their faith on what they heard. You have to get up. You have to say enough is enough. I see people who are afraid. Uh, it's 2003 and we're in 2022. So that makes it, I don't know, uh, 18 years. It's 18 years and probably three before that. I have been self-employed about 20 to 22 years. Most people would be afraid. Oh no, I need a union. Who told you you need a union? Who told you that? We have just come into this world and we have accepted the system that the 1% have set up for us. If having a union and working for someone was the best modality, why aren't they not doing it? Ask yourself that question, Michelle. If having a union and working nine to five, getting four weeks of vacation, let somebody put up your pension. If that was the best modality, why is it that the rich are not doing it, but they subject you and I to do it? We got to start thinking. We got to start thinking.
We got to start thinking a man is justified by his faith. Do you know if you step out in faith, you have a great plan and you have the confidence in yourself. God can give you a witty idea. You can become an entrepreneur. You can work for yourself. I have not worked a staff job in more than 22 years. I am an African-American and I am female. That means I have two strikes against me, but I have the greatest strike with me. I have a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I have a God who says the gold is his and the silver belongs to him. I have a God who says I will show tender mercies to whom I choose to show tender mercies to. And I will show loving kindness to whom I choose to show loving kindness. I have a God who can be trusted even when he cannot be traced. I have a God whose track record is impeccable. I have a God who says I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. I have a God who is a very present help in time of trouble. I have a God, a big God on my side. We have to get out of that system that they have told us, uh, you need a union, uh, you need a nine to five, uh, you need four weeks vacation. 20 odd years, I have never worked a staff job. As a matter of fact, when I finished my, my master's in anesthesia, the Holy Spirit clearly told me, work for no one, but work for me. How do you know when God has spoken to you? One, because what he has told you to do, if you did it and it come to pass, God spoke to you for 22 years. I have not held a staff job. And in anesthesia from 2003 until now, 18 years, I've not held a staff job because I've gotten to the point of two things, Michelle, that God is able and that I am gifted and skilled. You've got to start believing in yourself. You've got to know that you're gifted and you're skilled. You've got to know that God is on your side. You've got to know that grace helps, that grace will lessen the time and grace will lessen the toil. You must start believing God. Most of us, we can repeat scriptures, but we do not believe God. How do I know? Wait until the rubber hits the road. Several months ago, I told you that they just went into one of my accounts and stole $70,000. Uh, three weeks ago, I heard that there was a $200,000 levy against me. And somebody asked me, but you're so calm. Why are you so calm? You do not wait until there's a war to be battle-proof. You're battle-proof before the war. So when the war comes, you're ready and you can fight. Of course, it's easy to stand up and say, I'm richly blessed and highly favored. Wait until the enemy comes in upon you like a flood and we will know exactly where you are because we have not been battle proof. Keep your mind on Christ partner with the Holy Spirit, write a plan for yourself and stick with it, knowing that you did not get yourself into your present predicament overnight and you're not going to get out of it overnight. Stay the course, my brothers. Stay the course, my sister. If God says you are an overcomer, you are an overcomer. If you want to see your loved ones are saved, stay on the battlefield. But you must ensure that you're living right. You must ensure that you're in right standing with God. You must ensure that you're doing things God's way because you can only yield God's results when you do things God's way. Stop thinking inside the box. Think outside of the box. Who told you these things, these rules that we have gotten ourselves in? Who told you that it has to be like that? Who told you? I can never, ever, and I will say this, after 22 years, I can't punch any clock for nobody. I can't work for anybody after 22 years. Punch a clock and you're going to tell me what time to come and what time to go. 22 years, God got me out of Egypt and, I, and he caused me to wander in the desert so he can get that Egyptian mindset out of me. In order for you to thrive, you've got to get that Egyptian mindset out of you. You've got to think like God. Look at the, you know, we think that Moses and, and Joshua and, and, and all these 
patriarchs. We think it's a story. They're real folks like you and I, Jackie. And they did the impossible because they happened to believe God. So I'm encouraging you, if not now, how long are you going to wait? If not now, when? And if not you, who? Who are you waiting on to move your situation? Who are you waiting on? Moses faced the Red Sea and he cried out unto the Lord. And the Lord says, why are you crying out to me? What is that in your hand? He had a solution in his hands, but he didn't realize it. Why? Because his solution seemed insignificant. It wasn't a chariot. It wasn't horses. It was a rod. But don't you know that your rod accompanied with the Holy Spirit is greater than chariots of fire? So I'm encouraging you, you've got to get up and say, I am sick. I am sick of being sick. I am sick of being poor. I am sick. I was only six years old. When I recognized poverty as opposed to wealth, as a matter of fact, I recognized at three years old. My mom will tell me if my dress was torn, she couldn't sew it. I didn't want it. After it was torn, she couldn't put it back on me. But when I was six, I recognized that my mother and grandmother lived very different lives. My grandmother lived in a huge house. My mother lived in a small two-bedroom apartment. My grandmother had a driver. My grandmother went to the supermarket and bought lots of groceries. My mother didn't. And I never wanted to live with my mother anymore. I didn't like poverty. I recognized poverty at six years old. And I didn't want it. You have to recognize some things in your life and say, no more, uh -uh, no more. Women, wait on God, keep yourself chaste. Uh, Paul fooled you up in May and then you cried. And in June, you are making Peter fool you up again. And in August, guess what? Sam is coming. When are we going to learn? Cut the credit cards. Keep yourself safe. Cut the credit cards if you have a problem with finances. Cut your cable off. That's $150, $200 a month to look at nonsense. Cut it off. Come up with a plan to increase you, to develop you, to develop your mind. I recommend everybody get this little book, $5, James Allen, As a Man Thinketh. You're in your situation, not because you don't have a job. You're in your situation, not because you're not married. You're in your situation, not because you don't have a green card. You're in your situation because of your mindset. Once you change your mindset and you start changing your attitude and your behavior, God will send you what you need. But we are waiting for God to send it for us to change your mindset. It doesn't work like that. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, I bless you, I praise you. I worship you, I magnify your name, O oh Father God. I thank you for the people under the sound, your people under the sound of my voice. I pray, O oh Father Lord God, that you will impress upon them the two questions I've asked by the power of your spirit. If not now, when? And if not me, who? Father Lord God, I pray that you will give us the tenacity to get up. I pray that you will give us the tenacity, O oh Father Lord God, to write a plan. I pray Holy Spirit, you will cause us uh, to get sick and tired of our situation, uh, to get sick and tired of our circumstances. Uh, I pray that you give us the grace to start affirming ourselves, uh, to open our mouth and start speaking about our lives as Jesus uh, says about us, uh, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, uh, that we are heads and never tails, uh, that we are first and never last, uh, that we are blessed in the city and blessed in the fields, uh, that we are blessed above all peoples, uh, that everything we lay our hands on for good will prosper, that we will lend to many nations what we shall not borrow, that the number of our days, uh, we are living them in peace, we are living them in productivity, we are living them in prosperity, that our household shall be saved, uh, that our sons and daughters will not perish, uh, that we will leave an inheritance for our children's children. Uh, oh, Father, that we will go forth and fulfill our commission, our, the Great Commission. Uh, we will fulfill our assignments uh, in the time that God has allotted us. Uh, I pray 
pray, God, that you will stir up the gifts that you have placed in our balance. Let these gifts come out in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, for a visitation by the power of your spirit. Holy Spirit, will you not quicken us? Will you not quicken us on the inward part? Holy Spirit, strengthen us. Holy Spirit, we knew a new, we need a new infilling. Holy Spirit, we need you to breathe upon us. Holy Spirit, cause us to rise and live again. Holy Spirit, cause us to shine. Let the sun shine upon us, but not smite us. Oh, Father God, we need quick help. We need a turnaround of our mindset. We need a change of heart and change of attitude. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray for help, oh, Father God. For the Bible says that we sufficient in all these things. It is not of him who willeth or of him who runneth, but it is God Almighty who showeth mercies. We pray that you will show us mercy tonight. I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I pray for a week, oh Father God, a week, oh God, that you will give them an open heaven under which to live. A week, oh Father Lord God, that you will surprise them. A week that you will settle the devil's dust. A week that you will break the chains of wickedness over them, the bonds of wickedness. A week, oh Father God, that you will loose them in the name of Jesus. A week, Oh, Father, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit will push them forward in the mighty name of Jesus. A week that everything that they touch will thrive. I pray, oh God, for a divine intervention in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Spirit of the living God, I pray that you will go after them. You will search for them. You will locate them. You will find them. I pray that you will bless them with blessings uh, that are pressed down, shaken together and running over. I cause men to give into their bosoms in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray, oh Father, Lord God, for a testimony. For the Bible says that they overcome Satan uh, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Uh, give them a testimony, oh Father, Lord God, this week. Uh, I pray, oh God, that you will slay every Goliath. Uh, I pray that you will part every Red Sea. Uh, I pray that you will cause them to go over every River Jordan uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father, Lord God, cause uh, that all the days of their life not a man should stand before them. Uh, I pray that you will go before them and cause the crooked path to be straight. Uh, I pray, oh, Father God, and I declare this week uh, that everywhere the sole of their feet tread upon, uh, I give them the grace to take it. Uh, I take it as a possession. Uh, I take it for Jesus Christ. Uh, I pray, oh, Father, Lord God, uh, that they will win a soul, oh, Father God. Uh, they will have souls to take to heaven. I pray that you will give them the boldness to open their mouths, to cry aloud and spare not. Oh, Father, will you not have mercy on my brothers and sisters? And while you're helping them and you're having mercy on them, will you not do the same for me? In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you that we have a brunch symposium coming up May 21st, Saturday, May 21st, or brunch symposium at the Rehoboth Cathedral, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and it's going to be $45. It's a brunch symposium followed by our formal dining. And we're having oxtails and brown stewed chicken, salmon. Um, we're having... Uh, roasted pork, we're having rice and peas, Haitian black rice, we're having uh, mac and cheese, we're having just, you know how I do stuff, you know how I do it, it's going to be grand, and this, so there's going to be food for the soul, food for the spirit, and food for the tummy, and you don't want to miss, the topic is the maiden, the man, and the mission, meaning there's something that will be spoken into the life of everyone who's there, the maiden, the man, and the mission. You do not want to miss it. May 21st, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Rehoboth Cathedral. The flyers will come out and tickets will come out soon. I crave your support. It is going to be amazing. Now we are finished. Let us say or two affirmations. I am made in the image and likeness of God. I am an intellectual being. I am a thinking machine. I am made in the image and likeness of God. I am an intellectual being. I am a thinking machine. And the second is, just as we taught tonight, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
You can do it because the Holy Spirit indwells you. You can do it because the Holy Spirit empowers you. You can do it because the Holy Spirit, Spirit is partnering with you. This is Jen Harvey of the Huddle. Until we meet again, may the peace presence, power purpose, protection provision, promises and providence of God rest and abide permanently with you is my prayer. Friends, I love you. Go forth and thrive.